When I read the script, I, I understood right away that this was a journey that Frank went on with people who really experienced um, these circumstances and it was a chance for us to allow their voices to be heard. It was a slow introduction into this scene or, you know, a slow pace into the scene. And for me, the way I prepared is I really fed myself with a lot of the documentaries and the materials that was um, available to me. We kind of uh, worked together uh, from the very, very beginning. You know, the phrase, nothing about us without us. And the idea was that we get this film as close to reality as we can. <laughs> Are they fine? Thank God I see you face to face today. You got news? My interview. Finally. We thank God. Though. When it be safe? In a six weeks' time. Make you make sure say you tell them everything, Aisha, too. They must know everything when it happen. A young woman that is resilient but also hopeful. I will call you the day before. Aisha, do not worry. Inshallah, God go do one. We go there together again soon. We go happy again. She's trying to find success on the other side of difficulty um, and tribulations, and she's trying to find triumph, you know, when life is trying to knock her down. Me, I miss you too. I miss you. Frank, from the very early stages, allowed me to meet with some of the women. And I met with real people, and they shared, you know, their beautiful stories, but also the painful parts of it. Please, now, I miss my boss. What you want me to do? Just give it to me. It's right there. I need your card. And when I got that sense of how they were feeling, I was able to just tap into that for Aisha in those moments, because there are women out there who have gone through that and have been silenced for whatever reason, or trauma has silenced them. Ms. Osaki, would you like to tell us a little bit more about your story? Yes, but it's not a story. It's not something I've just made up. I don't have another alternative. A group of men came to my house. They asked my father for the money that he owes them. He borrowed it so he can pay off my uni fees and to help look after his family. He didn't have it. So they shot my father and my brother. And then they had their way with me. They raped me. And in that moment, she had to speak in order for her future to be set free. Thank you, Ms. Osagi. It took real courage um, and a sensitivity that needed to be added to the scene. So it was a lot of just talking with Frank, allowing myself to be a vessel, and just trying to tell the truth. I'm really disappointed that you will make me wait for two years before giving me an answer to my case. I came here not begging for anything, just for safety. I don't want a handout, and I don't want anything for free. I'm just here for safety. That was one of those moments and one of those profound scenes where if someone was, you know, looking at this and had the shared experience of Aisha, would they feel that this was truthful? Would they feel that this was integral or sensitive um, to, to, to their story? So I would want people to feel not only impacted by the story, but also to feel hope and to feel a, a sense of um, encouragement, no matter what they're facing in life. Yeah. Aisha, the taxi is outside. We want to create a space to talk about systems like this and for people to consider what is the immigration system wherever they are. What are the barriers uh, for people who are seeking protection that, that they have to face that other people living in that society don't have to face? We do this to shed light on something that needs a voice. The Irish government had they pledged to dismantle the system uh, and to replace it with a more humane system that's more mindful of human rights. When you do answer the questions in the interview, you have to be prepared to go into detail. That is happening slowly. Every piece of art made about the direct provision system should be about dismantling the direct provision system and should be about ending the direct provision system. And that's a personal initial motivator for me on, on a kind of a more local level, you know. I don't 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 know.
No, no. What, 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 what's know. happening? Oh. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening is, hey, what's in the happen? What in the happen? What in the happen? What in the happen? No, what in the happen? I just said, what in the happen? What in the happen? What in the happen? Mm. And when, when, you, when you're vexed with somebody, you can say, you know, get, get out of here, you know, come out. Get come out, out here. Come Make out. you the go. Come out. Come out here. Tell it. Come out. It was my first time filming in Ireland. <laughs> I felt it was beautiful to also like connect with an Irish team, you know, um, production company and team. So that felt really good too. I love filming there and um, it's my home. Um, I've never filmed anywhere else. <laughs> so I don't have any frame of reference. It's all Ireland for me. Aisha is our way of giving a voice to the voiceless. Hopefully this film will have a purpose in adding its, adding itself to the chorus.